Hi, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. You know, most people that are in the global supply chain will one time or another have to be able to deal with a container. Either they will get a container shipped or a container will come in, or they will have to learn how to load a container themselves. So it's kind of important if you're going to be in the global supply chain to understand a little bit about containers. I have been in the global supply chain for quite a while. And I've been in a lot of factories. I've watched a lot of containers be loaded. I've helped load containers myself. So I know a little bit about what it means to load a container. I also know that to really load a container efficiently and effectively and to have the products arrive at their destination and not be broken or not have problems is really in many ways kind of an art form. You know, those guys that are in factories that are loading containers every single day usually really understand how to best load the container. But there are a few rules that you should realize about loading containers. And here are some of the rules. First of all, it's easier to load a container if you sort of put the cartons out a bit in the way you're going to load them. In other words, those that you're going to load first, you put near the container first, then those that are second, and so on. Then it just helps you to keep it all organized. You always load a container from back to front. So anything you're going to put in the back of the container and at the bottom of the container, you would put on first. And then you would move from the, um, you know, from the bottom to the top, and then you keep moving forward that way. It's really difficult if suddenly you put everything on the bottom and then you decide, oh, we're going to load the middle and the top. It's very difficult to load a container that way. You really need to load a container starting at the bottom. And then when the bottom section's done, then you do the middle and then you do the top and then you go to the next section forward. Load the largest cartons first. This is because they're usually the hardest ones to be able to fit in to a container. And this is especially true if you are loading a container that has a lot of different items, like our many containers that we load, where sometimes we might have furniture pieces and accessories and other things all in the containers. We have all different sizes of boxes. That can, in some ways, be a much harder and difficult container to load. If you're loading a container where your box is all one size, then that can actually be easier because you, know, you just basically stop, start from the back and keep loading it. Larger items can be harder, you know, to fit more into a container just because the container is limited by the actual size of the container. If you have smaller cartons, you can usually fit some more in. Put the heaviest cartons on the bottom and the lightest on top. This just makes common sense. You know, you don't want to have something which is really heavy on the top. And when the container arrives, it smashed through all the bottom cartons. So you need to not only just understand the size of the carton, but also the weight of the carton. And you want to make sure that the lightest items go on top. You know, there's many reasons why loading a container is so important. Shipping is very expensive, and in recent years, it has gotten more expensive. The price, though, has recently come down a bit more, but in some instances, you know, there was such a shortage of containers that essentially their, you know, containers were going up three or four times that they normally were. So you want to be able to maximize your, your load capacity. You want to make sure that the cargo you put in, you put as much cargo as you can, that every single square inch of that container is loaded if possible. Now that is actually very difficult to do, but you need to look at a container and, and realize that every single square inch on that container is costing something. So the more you can put in, the more cost effective it will be. And that goes with the next one for the cost efficiency, that the better the container can be loaded, the more cost effective it can be. You want to also make sure that however you're loading the container, that there's safety during the transit. You have to make sure that you're legally in compliance. You've, you've been able to basically minimize all your liability risks because if you are a supplier and if you are shipping to somebody and they get all the goods and the goods are broken, they're all damaged, it could be a huge expense for you. So you really want to make sure that you've minimized all of your risks. And if you're not sure exactly how to load a container, there is some container loading software. And we have used this, you know, sometimes in the past. If you're able to afford it or if you need it, you might want to be able to consider getting a monthly subscription to this. Uh, some of them can be quite expensive or it can be quite costly. 
In the past, if we weren't sure, we have used some of them to see. Sometimes they've worked and other times it hasn't quite fit. And one of the reasons is, is because if you say a carton is so many inches, but actually the carton may be a little bit larger, then it may they may not all fit in the container as the software says it fits in a container. Even something as small as one cm per carton can make a huge difference on the overall loading and exactly what will fit into a container. This is why you know loading a container can be so complicated and really requires a very specific skill. There's so many different things that you need to check in loading the container. We always recommend that when you get a container from the port and the container comes in that you check the container. And we usually always check a container for hole and damage. And you might ask, well, why do you do that? Well, the reason why is because we have had products arrive in the United States which have been wet. And even though, you know, the, the, we know there was not water in the container when it left, but if that container ends up on the ship and the ship goes through a storm and there's holes in the container, by the time your um, goods arrive to their destination, you could find that they're already damaged due to water damage. So you can check the holes. One of the best ways to do this is to get in the container and have someone close the door so you can see if any light is coming through where it's not supposed to. You know, if there's huge holes, then you might want to say, look, this container needs to go back again. Or if it, you're able to somehow patch it or cover up the holes or make it so it's okay, we have done that too sometimes in the past. You need to check that the container door also closes properly. We've also had this problem where the container door didn't properly close and because it didn't properly close, again, when the container was on the ship, the, you know, the ship went through a storm and it ended up the goods got wet in the process. You know, you can never really guarantee or know where your container is going to be placed on the ship. And so, you know, it could be placed, placed on the very top or it could be placed on the bottom. You really don't know about that. Most people don't have the control over this with the shipping company. So if it's placed on the top and they go, the ship goes through a huge storm and your door is not closed, water is going to get in there. That's why you need to also check the container seaworthy. Some of the containers are so old, they're so battered, and, and they you know, have so many holes in them that they're just really not seaworthy. They've been rusted out. And a lot of this can depend, again, upon the shipping company you're using and whether or not the shipping company has good containers. Some of them that we have seen, the containers have been pretty bad. In fact, we haven't considered them to be seaworthy at all. You know, we've re received some containers that were in such bad shape that we refused them and we told them that they had to return them and get us a new one. And don't be afraid to do that because at the end of the day, if you get a container which is full of holes and is not seaworthy and the door doesn't shut properly and you load that with something, let's say, as we do with wooden furniture and your furniture arrives to the United States and it's all wet and it's all damaged, it's going to be a problem. So it's better that you do all these things while you're loading the container and that you check all these things ahead of time. You need to also really understand the different sizes for a, a container. And the basic standard sizes are, it's a 20 foot, a 40 foot, and a 40 foot high queue. There are some 45 foot containers. I've honestly been seeing less and less of them but there are some 45 foot containers, but most of the standard containers today are the 20 foot, the 40 foot, and the 40 foot high queue. Most of my customers will ship a 40 foot high queue. And what a high queue means is the container's slightly higher, you can fit more goods in, and it's just an overall better value for money. So you need to understand all the measurements for the container itself. I've written a blog about this, which is called 10 Tips to Loading a Container. If you'd like to be able to learn more about how to load a container, all about a container, and the importance of understanding about loading a dry shipping container. This really is one of the essential parts of the global supply chain, and almost anyone that's in the global supply chain is going to have to deal with this sooner or later. Either you're receiving containers on your end, or you're shipping containers out, or you're helping to ship the containers. Whatever process of the supply chain you're in, this is something you need to know and understand. 
This is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate your time. We appreciate you listening to us about the loading of a container, and we appreciate you being part of our community. We like to thank you, our listeners. We like to thank our tech team that helps put this together, especially Rico. And we'd like to thank all of you out there who help make this podcast possible. Thank you. Mm-hmm.